Hello everyone, this is John Powley from Gothenburg, Sweden, and this is my IDS webcast on how to predict whether a melanoma is in situ or invasive. So these are four melanomas, and I'm guessing that if you had to predict whether these were in situ lesions or invasive ones, you would probably guess that they were in situ, and you would be correct. And here we have four other lesions that are apparently raised and they have more colors, more dermoscopic features to be described, and these are invasive melanomas. So why is it important to be able to recognize whether a melanoma is in situ or invasive prior to surgery? Well, uh, you might think that we're going to excise the lesion anyway and the pathologist is going to give us the diagnosis, so perhaps let's just wait and see. Of course, this is important because if we can recognize in situ melanomas, then we will make earlier diagnoses. This is number one. Number two, preoperatively, you want to give as much prognostic information to your patients as possible because they might be, have to be sent home before excising the lesion on another day. So if you know that it's in situ, then you can give them the good news immediately. Of course, this is also important for triage purposes and be able to plan, to plan your dates for the surgery. And lastly, and this is perhaps something that we have to prove in the future, uh, we can perhaps use the uh, pr prediction to choose more adequate surgical margins than we do today. And I'll get back to this point at the end of this webcast. So how can we predict if a melanoma is in situ or invasive? Well, the first clues are the clinical ones. Is this a flat or a raised lesion? Of course, flat lesions will most probably be in situ, whereas raised lesions, like this one that we see here, will most probably be invasive. Of course, with thermoscopy, we'll see the colors of melanin in a completely new light. In the epidermis, melanin will show as brown or black color, whereas melanin within the dermis will be either gray if it's in the superficial papillary dermis or blue if it's in a deeper area. Besides the melanin, we can also see red, pink, and white structures indicating vascular uh, structures and fibrosis. The number of colors also may indicate whether a melanoma is in situ or invasive. If we only have brown or black, then we have one or two colors, and this will indicate that it may be in situ. Whereas if we have a mix with brown or black, but also gray, blue, white, red, and or pink, then we may be looking at an invasive melanoma. So three or more colors may indicate invasiveness. So here are two examples. To the left, we see a flat lesion with two colors, two brown shades, and to the right, we see a slightly raised lesion, at least centrally, and we see brown, black, blue, and white. So four colors, and this would indicate that this is invasive. Of course, in dermoscopy, we also have many melanoma-specific structures, as the ones shown here. Some of these are predictors of invasive melanoma, especially atypical blue-white structures but also shiny white lines and or polymorphous vessels. Here we have a thin invasive melanoma showing atypical blue-white structures in the central area. Here we have a lesion with atypical blue-white structures at 6 o'clock, but also multiple shiny white lines and even polymorphous vessels. This was a thin 0.4 millimeter thick invasive melanoma. And here we have, of course, a nodular, nasty-looking lesion with multiple colors. It's raised, and it also has polymorphous vessels, among other features, indicating that this is, in fact, an invasive melanoma. Now, on the opposite side, we have predictors of melanoma in situ. And these aren't as strong predictors, but if these are the only findings we see and the lesion is flat and we only see brown or black structures dermoscopically, then it most probably will end up being a melanoma in situ. And these are atypical network, irregular hyperpigmented areas, angulated lines, of course, mainly seen in chronically sun-damaged 
uh, skin with melanoma arising in this area, lentigo maligna, prominent skin markings, and lastly, extensive regression, usually covering at least 50% of the lesion. So let's see some examples. Here we have a melanoma in side two with atypical pigment network. Another melanoma in situ, in this case showing irregular pigment, hyperpigmented areas. Here we have an extrafacial lentigo maligna with angulated lines. Another melanoma in situ, as with the previous lesions, flat and only brown and black colors, in this case with prominent skin markings. And in this case we do see some gray color and some white color, we, but we also see extensive regression. And this is, of course, a melanoma arising in very sun-damaged skin, and this lesion was a melanoma in situ. Lastly, I wanted to discuss the fourth reason why I find it important to predict whether a melanoma is in situ or invasive, and I wanted to talk about our traditional wide-margin approach in which if we see a an atypical melanocytic lesion, we do a, a diagnostic excision first with a two millimeter margin. This is the tradition and what the guidelines tell us. In step one, when the pathologist gives us the report and we see that this is a melanoma in situ, we go ahead and excise the scar again with a five millimeter margin clinically. And I personally find this quite unnecessary because if we can predict that this was a melanoma in situ, and hopefully now with the tips that I've given you today, uh, you, can, you could have predicted that this was going to be a melanoma in situ in the worst case scenario, well, then we might want to use a wise margin approach in which if we already know or suspect that this was a melanoma in situ, we might as well excise it with a five millimeter margin immediately. And in this way, we avoid the unnecessary pain, suffering, costs and resources that are needed for the second stage uh, of the uh, two-step approach to excising uh, these lesions. So with this, I thank you very much for your attention and hope you enjoyed this webcast. Bye-bye.